Uh, can you guys see my screen? Can someone confirm, please? Yeah, bitch. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let me start the recording and also let me make sure I'm recording this video with my Camtasia because I will be using this video as a demo. Let me make my camera on also. Okay, everything good? Cool. Let me have some water before I start the recording at least. Sitting with call for the last five hours, guys. Excuse me if I do any mistakes, just let me know. And yeah, record to the cloud. Uh, okay, I have started the Zoom recording. Now we can get started. Recording in progress. Perfect. Cool. So right now we'll be proceeding uh, exactly where we, uh, you know, uh, I mean, we have done so much things yesterday, so much of configurations. And I'm expecting that you everyone has done the practice and we guys are good to go, right? So now the next thing that we'll be doing today, well, before I get started, let me tell you, okay, today is Saturday, okay? So maybe we'll be again meeting on Tuesday. So the conceptual thing will be carry forward from Tuesday. Now, as I have told you yesterday, our code can be improved a lot, right? So, so far, whatever we are doing, that's good. Everything working fine. But we cannot just stick to like, okay, my code is working fine, so everything good. No, we have to improve our code. And maybe most, most of you are here because of that. So, you know, we will be doing those things step by step. Still, a lot of things I have to change in my code as well. OK, first of all, what we have done so far, let's revise and, you know, let's revise quickly within five minutes and then we will be going to the next step. OK, and basically today I'm planning, guys, I'll be just letting you know the basic crawl and also some a little bit of design improvement we'll be doing with our project. OK, and yeah, so every day we'll be improving our project. I know this is not a vlog or something that, you know, I'll be telling you, OK, this is the code that you have to copy paste. No. Let's do it step by step. Okay, I think everyone has some time if you are over here. Cool. So now let's go to the app.java and this is the app.java class that we have created yesterday. So basically a few things we did over here. So I think everyone is our about this right over here. Well, can I just, uh, you know, remove all my breakpoints? I can see I have a breakpoint here in the line number 18. Can I go here and close this? Okay, come back to the Java perspective. Cool. So first of all, uh, in the line number 13 here, I'm basically creating my configuration object. And as I have told you yesterday, configuration is because, you know, this is the starting point. I want to bootstrap my, uh, you know, Hibernate application with this sort of configuration. So, and I have added a couple of things. The first one is my configuration file from where basically I'm loading my data. And uh, if, if you can see right over here, uh, I do have a configuration file in the resources folder called hibernate.cfg.xml and yesterday I have told you here I did set up everything with what I'll be connecting to my database okay those information I have put it over here just like the URL username password some driver class name I want to I want to view the SQL these are some properties which are not going to be used for connections but we'll be using this for our for our own purpose. For an example, if I want to see like the SQL that a high unit is firing internally, then I need to turn on this. This one I was explaining, I think to Lavinia that she was asking about the connection pool or something. I told you that Hibernate is also providing some properties, which will be basically creating a connection pool for you. Here, it will be creating a 20 connection whenever your app Hibernate will be bootstrapping, but this is not good for production. For production, we'll be using some kind of connection pooling vendor. And these are the bunch of properties that we have set for our session factory with what we'll be creating our session factory. And that's what the thing that we have done over here with our configuration. And with our configuration, we are building our session factory object which is a heavyweight object and that need to be built for one time the session factory is um, you know is immutable so once the session factory object is created we cannot change the session factory object and we are building it from the configuration here couple of things to note the first thing is this the best way to create a session factory no absolutely not this is basically a legacy way now maybe you can ask me okay Vilas, then what's the latest way I'm going to be telling you the latest way, but I don't want to get into that right now because I don't want to make, give you a feelings like Hibernate is complicated. See guys, these things that we have done over here, creating the configuration and building the session factory. 
we won't be doing it many times in our day to day job these things will be configured once in your lifetime like you know one time for your project okay uh, then you know these are the things that we'll be doing every day like you know creating a new session for a new client client you know that you know everyone who are connecting to my application they are client like you know if lavanya is connecting kishore is connecting santan is connecting they are my clients right so session will be opening session and we'll be doing some operation like saving uh, maybe deleting maybe updating maybe we can uh, do different types of crowd up operations those are the operation that we will basically do in our day to day project okay now here you have to understand these things are going to be redundant so we'll be moving to a new file production but in to be um, to make it short we are basically creating our session factory object right over here because our section factory only will help us to create a new session instance and here only we are opening a session object using the session factory instance and as i have told you yesterday to keep everything short say Session means you are basically asking for a new connection to your database. For an example, Kisho want to save some data, or I want to save some data. I need a connection object first because this is the API which is going to give me some utility methods like save, delete, or whatever. And this is the API which is going to be connected to my database to save some data or to delete something or to update something. I need to be connected to my database first, and that connection only I'll be getting through the session object. Okay, and then I'm over here creating a new song, setting some data with my uh, song object, then beginning the transaction before I uh, do any kind of saving process, um, you know, started. And once the saving has been done, I'm making a commit, and then my data will actually go to the database. And at last, I'm closing my connection because as I have told, um, our application may have um, limited number of connections right maybe you can imagine like you know if you have a database like mysql my license that i am purchasing from mysql let's say i'm giving them money that okay i'm giving you 1000 rupees they will be saying okay in 1000 rupees i'll be giving you only 20 connections so i have to make sure that i'll be using or I'll be reusing those 20 connection. If I'll not be closing my session object and if I leave it open, that may lead to our connection leak issue. Or, you know, maybe uh, let's say I have 20 uh, customers si uh, signing into my website. Let's say, you know, uh, Praveen is signing. Let's say, you know, Nagasri is signing in. Let's say Supriya is signing in. Okay. I have three people signing in. And just like that, I'll, I'll, I'll have 30 people signing in. And once all the people sign, uh, sign into my website, and if I'm not closing their session, their session will be remain open. Let's say they are signed out and they went from my website. Still, their session object is occupied and as we are not closing it. And then maybe in future we'll be run out of connections and we'll have connection leak issue. So that's why we are closing the connection over here in the line number 35. However, this is not a good way because imagine if there is some exception is occurring here, then of course the CPU flow will go out of my, uh, you know, the program flow will go out of uh, from here from the line number 18 and this line will never execute we are also not considering that scenario so we will be right now improving this code pretty much and uh, so far whatever we have done over here i just have given you a quick walkthrough tell me guys so far you are comfortable or not yes or no so that i can proceed with some more thing okay okay can i get some more config uh, confirmation yes. quickly yes, yes. okay yes, perfect no questions guys no questions anyone having any questions no uh, no Abhilash. cool i know we are having the session in a different time <laughs> so yeah and i'm bugging you in your weekend as well but Abhilash. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah rahul this session is same as when we use cookies and sessions you know no no don't don't talk about those sessions you can think about sessions like that only but this uh, here sessions uh think about in a different perspective here we are not uh, using the session to you know we are not uh, we are not sending this session over our browser or something but here session means give me a new connection from my i mean uh, to my database let's say you want to interact uh, with my website rahul okay imagine we have a website you want to interact with that website okay you want to save some data you want to face some information you are interacting that means that application need to connect to your backend database isn't it and if it is connecting to the backend database that means that to con your application need to connect to the database first before you face some uh, you know data or before you save something or before you update something so to your application need to connect to the database so you need a connection to connect to the database so your application need to say your database that hey 
give me a connection and using that connection only you will be saving the data or updating the data or whatever so this is just treated for for now just treated as a connection but i'm going to be telling you what do you mean by this particular thing it can work as a cache it is it can work as a first level cache there's so many things to understand over here rahul but we will be coming to that you know step by step right uh, for now okay. just say no it's not like that session cookies that you have discussion this is just going to help me to create or to start a uh, start a connection with my database so that i can use it as a api just like your jdbc template if you know spring okay cool so hopefully we are good and one more thing guys yesterday i have not told you this one see in the line number 14 i have told you that here i am loading my configurations right so inside this hibernate cfj.xml i have defined my connection you really don't have to write this file name over here this configure method that you have this is going to automatically look for that particular file so maybe they would have documented some here um Okay, so see for hibernate cfg.xml, which is the standard configuration file name that you should have in your project. If you have this particular file in your resources folder, then you don't have to explicitly write your file name right here. Okay, just like this. It will it it doesn't need it, right? Maybe if you're gonna be remove this, still your application will work fine and it will be reading this configuration file. Okay, but let's say if you are having a different uh, name for this configuration file, for an example, my hibernate.cfg.xml, then that file you have to explicitly load it by writing that particular file name right over here. But if you have this file name, you don't have to write this inside the configure method. Okay, there is another configure method. You can see there are a couple of configure method. The first one does not take any argument because it's gonna look for this particular file called hibernate.cfg.xml. But the one that we have over here, this is basically you will be needing when you have a different file name, okay? So yeah, that's also one more thing that I want to tell. Well, before I proceed further, I also want to clarify one thing, okay? Let me open one of my slide, okay? Before we do any kind of code today, I think you guys also have some fresh uh, mind right now. So let's talk about it, okay? See this slide, guys. So, in this side, uh, in this side, I have my Java entity, okay? And uh, this side, I have my, uh, you know, song table, okay? This is my DB side, this is my Java side. This is my class name, this is my class, these are, these are some properties that I have inside my class, and this is my table. Okay, table in the database, which has a song ID, which is my primary key, song name, and artist. Now, I have told you guys yesterday, in order to create an entity, we have two minimum requirements to create an entity. The first one, you will be having this at entity as a marker, and the second one, you will be having at ID, which is basically telling that this song ID is the primary key uh, within this table, okay? So basically, I have told you, in this case, the configuration class or the entity class looking pretty straightforward because this song is my table name, okay? And this is my class name. So my class name is exactly matching with your song name. So I do not need any extra, you know, annotations over here. Directly, this particular class does mean that I do have a table in my database called song, okay? And of course, I have a table over here called song. Okay, the next thing here is that the song ID is right now mapped to this. So any data will be setting with this particular properties. It will be directly mapped to this particular uh, in a column. Anything will be setting over here will be going directly to here. Okay, and I do not need to specify any other different thing. I have specified here ID because this yellow, you know, key that we have stands for primary key and we have to define the primary key over here by, by using at ID. Okay, and just like the song name tends to the song name column in the database side, an artist uh, here uh, is, is a Java properties. This tends to the artist over here. So that means any properties that I'll be setting over here will be directly going to this particular table, no extra configuration required. Let's see another scenario, but here there are two different things I have added. Now look at this, this is your database side, this is your Java side, but here you can see everything remains same, but I have to explicitly write this annotation called a table. Why? Because my class name is song, that does mean that if I'm writing here entity that I do have a table 
here in my database side called song but this song does not have a s right but my table name ends with a s so in order to make sure if your class name and your table name does not match you have to use a table here and you have to specify the database table name explicitly so that your hibernate whenever it will look for this particular class that it will it will see okay the class name is song but well i don't have to find a uh, you know a table in my database site called song the table will be songs right over here that's why i have used this annotation rest of the things are same no extra thing is required everything will be automatically mapped to uh, from java properties to your database properties or database columns right over here but here is the example that we have taken yesterday okay little different look at this familiarize yourself with this piece of code here I do not have to specify at the rate a table because my class name and the table name is exactly matching. And uh, right now, you know, I do not need to have a table annotation, but rest of the things you can see, ID is tends to song ID. So explicitly I'm saying that this ID does mean that song ID column in the table. So here song ID I do have explicitly I have written at the rate column and at the rate ID at the rate ID because this is the primary key at the rate column because this is the song ID and song ID is basically the column name in the database where my ID property data in my Java site should map to. Okay. Similarly, here you can see song name is mapped to song name. You may ask that, okay, Vilas, song name and song name both are matching. Okay. Both the properties are matching. Then why you are explicitly specifying song name over here? Not needed guys. You don't need to add that. Okay. But it is a good practice whenever you are creating any entity classes in Hibernate, make sure you give at the rate column so that it will be convenient for other developer to read your code. Okay. If you don't want to give this at the rate column, not required because this song name and this song name are matching, but explicitly I've defined it over here. But here is a good example. See, I want my artist data should go to the single column of my table. And that's why I have explicitly written, uh, written here singer. So right now the artist data will be mapped to singer in the song table. This is the thing that we have done since yesterday. Uh, I think 20 minutes I have taken to explain all these things. I hope that you guys are on same pace. Now I can proceed with some code. Can you guys confirm me again? Everything is good. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, perfect. Forget about that. Okay, theory. Okay, I'm also bored right now. Okay, so let's do some interesting thing. Okay, from where we'll be starting. Okay, we have uh, created an app yesterday, which was basically uh, saving a song object to my database, isn't it? So this basically this is going to be my save app. Let me change it to change the name to save or let me say create app because we are creating a song object by using this app, isn't it? Rename the file name and maybe I can create a, another package over here where I'll be storing my all my entities so com dot selenium express dot entity okay or entities whatever you want to say and this entity that I have here I'm going to be moving this entity to this package okay right done cool so I just have created one folder for my convenience for my readability convenience Okay, so now inside this create, create. so do I have any data in my database right now? Because I remember I have truncated the song table here. Let me run this select query. I do not have any data over here. Let me first uh, insert some data. So maybe I can run this particular program to insert the song one object. Run is Java application. So there you go, it is inserted. Let me go over there, run this query. Well, Rimjim Gire Savan is inserted. Maybe I am going to set some uh, more data over here. Maybe I'm going to say Believer Imagine Dragons ID, let me say. Let me run this one more time. Okay, so I just want to get some more data over here so that I can play with them. Okay, uh, that's it. Okay, let me change the ID over here, three. And let me say one more. Let's say call ho na ho. And this is uh, this the artist is Sonu Nikam. Okay, Control S, run this. These are some Bollywood songs. Okay, if someone is not following Bollywood, and of course a lot of you are from different uh, countries, so forget about that. These are the song names, right? Perfect. So right now, 
Uh, cool, I have some data. So right now, let me write a particular application to read some data. Right now, here we are creating the song object and saving it, right? Now let me try to read some data. Let me just to copy this application, paste it over here. Let me say a read app, read uh, app. Okay, here, uh, crowd. We're gonna be doing crowd right now. Create, we have done. Now let's try to read. I'm gonna get rid of all the code that I have written over here and I'll be writing some code from scratch to read the data or to load the data or to get the data from my database, okay? Now let's say I have a requirement that my client is saying, okay, uh, get the number two data, okay? Get the number two row object uh, right over here and load it in your application, okay? Fetch that particular information of the song ID two. Then how I'll be doing that? I told you any operation you want to do, you have to use your session object, just right here. So session, session I'm gonna be writing and let me initialize it to null, later I'll be initializing it. And now I'll be doing session dot, I want to fetch. So if I want to fetch a data or if I want to fetch a particular record from my database, I have to use get method guys. Okay, there is a method called get. Now if you're gonna be using this get method, it will be expecting a couple of things. First is going to be the entity type. That means which object you want to retrieve, which uh, in which table you want to look for the data. Let's say, I wanna say, hey, give me the second, uh, you know, second column data or second row data from this table called song, get me this particular data, right? And if I wanna do that, I'm writing here two. Then two means I want to get the song data or song primary key two data, song table primary key two data. But right now I have to tell, okay, I need to get the number two data, but from which entity, from which table, from the song table, or maybe I can have many entities like book entity, maybe you know um, actor entity, uh, maybe library entity, maybe product entity. Now I want to get the data, uh, you know, which is, of this entity, that means song is right now referring to the table called song. Right now, I can I can also write a explicitly annotation over here. This particular class is referring to the table name called song. Of course, this is not required because my class name and table name both are same, but still I'm explicitly writing here. So I want to look for this particular table. So in order to say that, you have to go to your read app and you have to give your entity type and this time I need to get the song dot class object, right? So look for the song entity, that means song table and inside the song table, look for the number two primary key and get me that particular information. Now, once you get that, you're gonna be printing this. So sys out and do a song over here. Now let's see whether I'm able to face the data of the song and whether this particular record is retrieved right now. And of course you know that guys, if I'll be running, you guys will be scolding me. And might be you'll be saying that Avilash, you don't know how to code. You are getting a null pointer exception right over here because you are doing session.get and session you are assigning it to null. And of course, I will be getting the session because session is null right now. You will be getting a null pointer. Now the first thing is that again, we need to get the session object. Now to get the session object, we need to go to the session factory. Now to get the session factory, we need to set up the configuration. All redundant work again, we have to do. Maybe I can go to the create app and copy this piece of code. Okay, go to your read app, paste it over here. Okay, sorry, paste it over here. Now here I'm setting up my configuration and here I'm setting off my session factory. And now I can use the session factory to initialize my session. Session factory dot open session to open a new session. Sorry, it should be open session. Okay, control S. Now let me do right click, run as and run this application because I have initialized my session. And right now, cool. I'm getting a song object back. Right now guys, see, couple of things happened, okay. The first thing which has happened, whenever you have used a get of a get thing right over here, it did fire you a query, okay? The query got fired and this query got fired by Hibernate because we want to load the data. So we want to do some select operation, just like, you know, right over here, we will go to your DB. And if you want to load the number two data, then you have to write here, right? Where, um, let's say song ID is equal to two, right? You have to do that, right? If you're gonna be run this, you'll be getting that particular number two data over here first. Same query you have to run from here. Now that query, you don't have to run. Hibernate is going to create that query for you, 
and look at that hibernate has created a query for you where look at that part where my cursor is right now it is right now looking inside the song table okay and it has given an alias for this song called song zero and using this alias it is right now looking for song zero dot song id song zero dot singer song zero dot song name song zero is the alias name for song so it is trying to face everything and you know where the id where the id is whatever the id was giving this particular things is basically replaced by this question mark i'll be showing you like the exactly the binding how the things are happening and it is created a select query for you looking for everything and right over here it got you the result back and we are printing it over here now we are getting the hash code because of course you know inside the song class we do not have any two string method so let me create a two string method over here do a right click go to source and create a two string and check everything do a generate do control s go to your read app do a right click run as job application let's see what's going to happen right now perfect so now look at that we are getting we're able to load the id2 data if you want to make it id1 control s run this one more time right click run as job application we'll be getting the id1 data Okay, Rim Jim Gire Savan by Kisar Kumar, ID 1. Everything is working good. Now, this is one way to read data or to load data from your database. Another way is there, and there we will be using the load method. There are a couple of ways, guys. One is by using the get method, you can load a song class object. Otherwise, you can use the load method here. The syntax is going to be exactly same, but here instead of get, you have to use load. And in this case also, you'll be saying the things will work fine. Okay, now we are loading the data up number one. If you're gonna be changed it to number two, do control S to right click, run a job application. Things will also work over here. Okay, but the way the get and load works is a little different and we don't want to get into that thing right now. Maybe we'll do that after four or five session is passed, after your foundation and fundamental is built, okay? I will be needing that four or five lessons right now. So now once this load happens, guys, I'm actually able to print the data. So either by using the get method and the load method, I can able to face data from my database. I have to pass the primary key over here and the entity data that I want to retrieve okay so if someone is telling me hey can you just paste the number uh, first record of a, of a, a book entity then i can just say uh, number one and the book over here and it's gonna get me the book object over here okay but i don't have a book class uh, you know entity over here or i don't have a book table right there on my database i'm just telling you how i'll be loading different different entities data over here okay let me revert back so you just uh, right now understood about the get and the load method. I have not went into depth of get and load because why Hibernate has given us couple of methods? Why it has given us get method as well as load method over here to load the things or to face the things. It may give us only get method or load method. What is the point of giving us two method to interact with our database in order to face the data? Maybe there is something, there may be some differences that we'll be learning later. But in order to understand how to get and load the data, this method is sufficient. Can you just tell me and confirm me whether the read app that we have created is making sense to you right now or not? Confirm me, please. Yes, no. Okay. Making sense for everyone or you want me to tell a joke? I know this is not your usual time. <laughs> you want to tell a joke, Seja? <laughs> no, no, I want to ask it out. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, we don't need to use a transaction on this class. Yeah, no, right now we are not using spring, right? We are, okay, a transactional you are saying, right? So basically that's a good practice if you can define the transactional over here. There is no harm, you can just do session dot begin transaction and you can also do a session dot get transaction, uh, sorry, uh, get transaction that you have open dot commit there is no harm doing this it will also work exactly fine okay i mean it the way it was working before okay but you know uh, this won't be making any difference because we are just trying to face the data so well uh, if you want to write it's a good practice you can put everything inside a transaction but it's not required while we're using get making sense Rija? 
Oh, yes, and uh, about the annotation, a transaction. A transactional is a spring annotation, Srija. So whenever we'll be integrating our, uh, you know, hibernate with spring, with spring ORM, I'll be letting you know about the transactional and different states that we have in spring. Okay. Oh, okay. Perfect. Any other questions, guys? Any other questions? Please mute. Sir. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Is configuration classes? Is, is a singleton class it is a, it is session very session. nice question yes that's a singleton Hello. is that yeah uh Sainton, can you hear me can you guys hear yes, me yes, yes. okay yes, yes. so what i'm trying to say yes that's a singleton class and the way we are coding it right now is bad and i'm going to be telling you by the end of the session how you'll be making this thing singleton okay uh and uh well okay, okay. okay. if you're talking about internal implementation of session factory is singleton or not it is immutable guys yes it is immutable not singleton i should not write here singleton this is immutable that means once you create this object you cannot change it that means uh indirectly it is you know uh, what we can say singleton immutable is also the way of making a class singleton yes we can say that but that can we can also make diverse on that for hours Something. But right now, today I'm going to be saying you how what is the efficient way to create a session factory object. Because right now, if you're seeing we're copy pasting the same code everywhere, this piece of line are same everywhere, isn't it? So this is redundant. So how we can effectively make it better? How can we make it um, not redundant? So I, I will be coming back to that point. But let me just complete my crot. Okay, so I have did a create app, read app, maybe I can go with a update app right now, control C. Crowd, create, read is complete. Now let's go with the update. Okay, let me say update app. Inside the update app, let's, let's try to update some data right now. So first of all, let me remove everything. Now, first of all, I want to do some update. Okay, so what is the requirement here? Let's talk about the requirement. Let's go to the table here. Okay, so here I have my three records. Okay, now I have a requirement guys. Listen to this. Okay, the requirement here is you need to update the song name of Rimjim Gire Savan to Rimjim Gire Savan cover. Let's say some other singer is singing it. Okay, otherwise we can do one thing. Um, update all this song character to uppercase. Now it is in lowercase, right? So make it uppercase. So how we'll be doing that? So to do that, what we're supposed to do, let's go to over here. So here the requirement here is that change the song of number one ID to the song. The song name should be all uppercase. Okay. Or maybe we can give a dash over here and can make it updated. Okay. Or something. Okay. This later you have to change to all uppercase. Okay. So here is the requirement. ID number one song name should be changed to uh rim shim like this rim shim gire seven okay just like this cool so how we'll be doing that okay first of all so we will be building an object let's say song object song song is equal to new song and now inside this song object i want to set the name of the song to this okay copy this paste it over here and now you need to make sure that this particular song object you need to save okay so how will be uh, you need to update sorry you need to update so first of all how will be updating that so in order to update the song not only this thing not only this thing right now you will be telling hibernate that, that, that hibernate please update just take this object and do a update hibernate will say okay i'll be updating but to which primary key now I'll be updating this one to primary key number one. So over here, the object that I'm building, I'm also going to be say song dot set uh, set ID or something set ID, and I'll be setting my ID to let's say number one. Okay. So inside my song table, the number one column data name should be changed to this one. Now this um, this particular object I need to make a update with. So I need a I need my session API as discussed. So session session, and here primarily I'll be initialized to null, 
and this session object I'll be needing to run an update the session dot update over here and pass in the entity that you have created and this song object you just pass it and song is not as not a simple object it's an entity right now you are setting the id over here your id is the primary key and this is going to be referred to the song id so hibernate will be internally using this data to make an update because here you are saying hey session do a update to this object where the id is one and the song name need to be changed to this one or maybe i can say like you know song name should be changed to like this updated okay now look at this guys uh listen to this okay look at the look at the database table this is how my table here i have a song name i have a singer now let's make this update i have to initialize this session again let me go to the read up or somewhere let me copy the piece of code the configuration and session factory code let me come to the update app paste it over here now take the session factory and get the session object so session factory <coughs> sorry says <coughs> sorry guys okay so session factory dot of uh, what is that uh, get session right okay I won't be getting that I need to make this session factory dot um, open session cool now I'm opening the session and there we go I have the song I'm doing an update things are good so do a right click run as Java application and you're going to be seeing what's going to happen. First of all, nothing will happen. Why? See that? Go over there and see previously my song name was this. Run this. Uh, nothing changed. Why? This should be changed to capital letter, right? But right now nothing changed. Why? Because now we are trying to update something. We're trying to update guys. We're trying to make some changes in the database. So if you are making any changes, that means that need to be inside a transaction. This update need to be inside a transaction. So let me open the transaction. So session dot uh, begin transaction and let me also commit it. So session dot, uh, let's say get transaction, get transaction dot commit. Okay. Now let's see that this time Hibernate is trying to do a update. If it is, if it will be trying to do a update, then also it will be giving me a query over here. It will be creating a query whenever we'll be doing an update. So let's try to do that. Let's run this. And this time Hibernate fired a query and this is the update query. But look at this. There is something happening. We are making an update to the song class, sorry, song database table. We are setting the singer name by pasting it from here, but now we do not have any singer assigned to this song object. So I don't know what it is set. Maybe it should have set null. Now it is updating also the song name by getting it from here. And also it is updating all this thing where the song ID is this one, one. So all this uh, data will be taken out and will be filled out to all these query parameters that we have over here. Now, if you wanna be going to your database, you will be seeing something crazy here. Uh, just hit this particular box. Now you look at that. This data has been updated. Pretty good. Congratulations. But what the heck is this? The singer previously it used to be Kishore Kumar. Right now also we have overridden the data. Why that has happened? Because I'm constructing a new object and that object data I am filling out over here and doing an update. But this object that I am creating with this object I do not have the singer name set so i have to set the singer name explicitly also before i run an update now you, you may be asking me a question that okay Ovilas, what about i have thousands number of column over here then do you want me let's say i i have thousands number of column and i want to only update this particular uh, column data then why should i set all the all the column data so you just you you want me to do like this song dot set uh, let's say uh, release here Okay, let's say if I, I if I do have this property right now, I don't have, I have to set this data. Let's say I have thousands property of song. Let's say song dot set, let's say uh, music composer. Okay, then all those data I have to set right over here. Then why to do that? Why need, why to construct the object just like this? We already have a object in the database, right? Let's load that object only and then change the particular column data that you want to change. For an example, now I want to change this call ho na ho to uppercase, right? Then how I'll be doing it? I don't need to construct a object the way I have done over here. 
the the first thing that I'll be doing, I will be loading an object from the database itself. I'll be doing session dot get, and I'll be loading the number three. Uh, of, uh, I mean raw data over here, number three data, and the entity type is obviously going to be song uh, class data. I want to load so song dot class, and there you go. Do control one assign the statement to a local variable now. Once you load the data, here it is going to load every data uh, from here. Now, if you're gonna be put your uh, breakpoint over here, do a right click, debug as Java application. You'll be seeing the moment will be you know, you know, uh, executing this particular line. Do a step over. What I what I have done? Uh, can I? Okay, I don't know. I have not saved it. Sorry. Debug as Java application. Now let the you know execution flow stop here. Now once this line will be executed, do a step over. You will be seeing hover on this. Okay. Now we will be getting all our data fetched, right? Artist is Sonu Nigam, ID is something, song name is this one. We just want to change the song name, right? So resume this. So this time what I'll be doing, once I once my song class is loaded, then I'll be doing song dot set song name and I'll be just changing the song name. Let's say my song name is going to be um, whatever. Let's say song name is going to be call uh ho na ho updated okay just like this now i have i have loaded the object with that object i have set the song name i have overridden the song name with this property now i'm trying to do a update over here now you will be saying the only this particular data will be changed and this thing will not be overridden do a right click run as job application and you will be seeing the update query will be fired there you go. First, the get query has been fired because we are trying to load the data. So it is first load the data by using a select query. And once the data has been loaded with this data only, I am making a change. Uh, this one, I'm updating the song object. And then you can see I'm filling all, all the data I have. So it is basically using the singer. You are setting the singer, singer name and every property that I have over here. And it is setting everything with the song ID. And also we are giving the song ID over here called three. It has the song ID and with that only data update. Now, if you're going to be doing a refresh, you'll be seeing that this one will be changed, but this one will not be null just like this. Do a run. There you go. So Nunigam, and this one is also changed and we do not, we did not, uh, I mean, we do not lose this data. Okay. Because right here, if you're going to be putting the same breakpoint, do a run debug as Java application. Let the program flow stop here in the line number 25. Okay, do a do a no, uh, do a step over guys. And once the data will be loaded, hover on this. Now I can see now the data is this one. And uh, for an example, okay, let me resume it. Now I'll be making it updated with D like this, right? Now let me just do right click debug as Java application. The data will be loaded here in the line number 25. I'll do no, I'll do a step over. And it fetched the data, it's loaded the data by running a SQL query. These are the data that we have. Previously, the data was updated. Now I will set the data whenever I'll be executing the line. Hover on this one more time. See, this data has been changed with updated with all the other data remaining constant. Now with those data only, I'll run an update query. And the moment I'll be doing a commit, the Hibernate will create, uh, I mean, Hibernate will run this update query and, and will do a update on the database. Now if we'll be doing uh, a refresh. There we go. It's changed without um, making any impact to the other columns. Making sense guys or anything difficult here? Hmm. Tell me guys, are you on the same page with me? Yes, ma'am. Mehmet, you are good? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Uh, any other questions? We are good guys. Everything is good so far. So we are done with the update. Okay. We'll be using this update method to do a update. Okay. I'll be telling some more interesting thing about it, but let me try to complete the basic crowd over here. The next thing guys, create is done. Read is done. Update is done. One last thing to go. 
and that thing is the delete okay how we'll be deleting a particular record from the database for an example this uh, rim jim gary seven with the song number song id one i want to delete it and if i want to delete it then how i'll be performing that operation with hibernate i'm going to be copy this update app go over here do a paste and make it delete app okay we'll learn how to delete a particular row from the database okay so let's go to the delete app okay so obviously um you know that these things are getting constant for everything i'll be removing this stuff okay so now here i am basically opening a session i'm i have my session object now i'll be using a session object to delete something let's say session dot delete and it need an object now i want to delete this object the object with id one so in order to delete this particular object go over here and uh, the delete particular delete method particularly need an entity right over here so to load that object you know that how to load a particular object let's say i'll be using session dot get just now i have told you right you can either use get or you can either use load to load the object okay i want to load the object that i want to delete let's say number one object and this is going to be song dot class and i will be just making it assign it to a variable now i got the object that i want to delete it will be page me the object this this particular object which has the id one now that object i'll be copying and pasting it over here there we go done now what i'm trying to do here here i am trying to load the object that i want to delete okay delete and then once that object is loaded over here i'm passing that object to the delete method okay as simple as that deleting the object that i have just loaded okay i think this is making sense do a run and you will be seeing something very simple whatever you are expecting um that thing will happen but are you expecting that the object will be deleted right now with this piece of code can i get some answer if i'll do run no, we will ask. yeah why because it is uh, dml right we need to call it uh it is dml uh, we, uh can, can you just justify your answer uh somek yeah. so delete query i think it is dml hmm. manipulation language so we need to give commit i think to get exactly commit. exactly yeah tell me that you need to make it commit because we are trying yeah. to delete something so basically yeah. we'll be doing session good job somek session dot get transaction oh, sorry session dot begin transaction let me create the transaction here and this delete one i have to wrap it off with a commit so session dot get transaction the transaction that i have opened give me that hey session dot get transaction okay dot commit okay i'm repeating the process guys just want to make sure that you are okay with the basic thing now once you're going to run this first of all it is going to be load your uh, you know thing then it is going to run a delete query first it will it will be hitting your you know uh, select query to get the data over here and once the data has been loaded you are deleting this so it, this delete method internally is creating a query for you and deleting the things for you and there you go now if we'll be going over here this used to be your previous table do another refresh and there you go you don't have that particular object that object has been deleted okay that's how easy it is to make some communication with your database using hibernate and let me tell you guys so far we just know 1% of hibernate not even 1% i won't be considered that because whatever i know i don't consider it even uh, you know 50% okay because there are so many things to learn and i have not transferred at least 1% of my knowledge so far so still there if someone will be giving me this code i'll be scolding him that what you have done man why you are doing like this because still there are a lot of things to improve but not with the api method that i'm writing okay these things will be there for every application then once you started working with your spring and hibernate project in your real time uh, then you will be only dealing with this kind of thing getting the object deleting the object uh, but obviously we'll be doing more and more complicated stuff that you'll be learning throughout your entire course but now this is the simple thing that we are doing to do some basic crud but um, there are things to be improved and that's what we'll be doing right now but before that look at over here guys we are successfully creating uh, a particular object right over here inside the create app 
In the delete app, we are able to delete an object. In the read app, we'll be able to read a particular object from the database. And in the update app, we'll be able to update a particular database row using our Java code. And all we're using over here is our Hibernate session API in order to interact with our database. So tell me right now, are you okay with the CRUD? Hey. Okay. Guys, everyone good with the CRUD? Yeah. yeah um, I mean, hmm. Yes. Any no response? Tell me guys, somebody say, hey, Avilas, I don't understand anything. Where is Pravin? Pravin, everything making sense? No. Okay, practice it, Pravin. Yeah, you have to practice. You are, uh, I know you are, you've been working in a support project for a long time. So you need thorough practice, Pravin. Practice the same thing. Let me know if there is something you need to improve, right? Uh, it will, it will take some time to get uh, acquainted with everything. So be sure that you are practicing, not only Provin, everyone. Okay, everyone start doing practice. Okay, and next time you accept an offer for a support role, don't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I sincerely mean it, guys. I'm not telling that every support projects are bad, but most of them are bad. <laughs> You'll be forgetting your things. So anyone here who are also working on support previously? Tell me yes, if you are. Support project, guys. So previously, I also worked. Yes. Right now, yeah. Not now. Uh, yeah. Even I worked a blush. Okay. Why, why, guys? Why, why did you accept months. those offers? <laughs> no, actually, that was like, I was facer. So I did not know. That's the mistake, so Omic. I know how much you can do. You can do so much different thing. You have, you have a lot of different things within you. So the problem here is that people doubt themselves that uh, if I leave this offer, uh, can I get another one? Of course, yes. You will be get thousands. Trust me on that. Okay. Just wait for the right moment. Keep giving interviews. Okay. I will take it to offline anyhow. <laughs> okay. So cool. We are done with our crowd app. Okay. Hey, I'm also recording this. I don't, I don't suppose to sell all these things, right? Because I'm planning to give these things uh, as demo in my website. Okay. I'll make sure to cut it. Okay, anyhow. <laughs> okay, but yeah, this is the truth, guys. We don't have to really consider about the offers which are- You are still recording, sir. Ah, that's what I'm saying. I'm just covering it off. <laughs> we don't have to, you know, accept the offer which are for support role. We just need to look for some development projects if we are just starting our career so that, you know, you know we'll be get more uh, code to work with. And I'm not telling anything wrong. This is my point of view, okay? Abhilash, in some companies, they won't give a, a chance also. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, uh, I know that. But that's why only I'm saying, because uh, to be honest, I get a lot of requests every day. People who are even having a lot of years of experience, but they're working in support role, okay? Still, a lot of you are blessed that you guys are working in some, uh, you know, legacy project, that's not bad. Uh, maybe 70% of uh, project are still legacy, okay? You cannot ex ex expect that every project will be using Spring Boot, microservices, you know, all the fancy things that you are learning right now. Some projects will be still be running, which are, which are developed in 1995 or 2000. Right now, I'm currently working with a project, which is from 1996. Think guys, you know, what kind of logic they would have used there. And I'm going mad, you know, seeing the code. But yeah, that's how, you know, you'll be start learning to deal with the code. Okay, anyhow, uh, forget about all these things. We are done with uh, creating the different things over here. Okay, now let's change our topic to something else. I haven't given you guys complicated assignment for sure to the first group I uh, to to this batch people also I'm saying and you know just try to complete those things that will be helping you for sure okay maybe it's going to take some time but try to complete all your assignments okay I'll be giving you guys pizza we'll be completing it first so okay so now guys let's talk about something really interesting right now so everything we have done so far is good but I have told you a few things Okay, if you see every app that we have created here, okay, 
every delete app, read app, update app, all the four apps that we have created. We have done something pretty redundant and those are this code. We are creating our session factory object in each of the application that we have written over here. So imagine you have thousands of file where you will be needing the session factory instance because you will be needing the session factory instance to create a session. But these code are, you know, not good. These are some redundant code we are writing over here. So in, a, I mean, instead of writing this code, what we can do as we are seeing this code are redundant, do a right click on this. Maybe this is basically making our you know, application messy. See that the valid piece of code is this much in our create app. The valid piece of code is this much in our read app, right? This much. But why, why the heck we are writing all these things? Maybe what I'll be doing right now, I'll be doing control one over here. Maybe I, can I select this much? Okay, this much till the session factory and do a control one and move it to a new method. So extract to a new method. I want to extract this much code to a new method. So do control one and click on this. It will be automatically help you to create a new method just right over here and change the method name to get session factory. Control S. Now look at this, what I've done here. So here I'm trying to get the session factory instance I have moved all my code to this particular method and here basically I'm creating the configuration, setting up the properties, my XML and my uh, annotated class name. And right over here, I'm building the session factory. I'm creating the object over here and returning the session factory. And the same method I'm calling over here. By this way, I don't have to dump a lot of code right over here only because I have moved everything to inside this method and I'm calling that particular thing over here. Same thing you can do um, in the other classes also. I can just do copy this one. I can go to read app and I can just delete all this piece of code from here. I can paste the same method that I have created on, on that particular class. I can cop copy the get session factory method, which is gonna get me the session factory instance because here we are building it and we are returning it. So that particular method, I can basically call it over here, okay? And I can get my session factory instance right here, okay? Uh, why I'm not able to call it? I have to do control S, uh, copy this, paste it over here. Control S, session factory. Uh, what yeah, happened? Yeah. Assigning to a session. Um, mm, sorry, come again. Assigning to session object. Oh, sorry, sorry. So here I have to do session factory dot open session. Okay. So this is going to get me my session factory instance. And here I'm basically creating the session. Okay. Or basically I, the way I was doing it previously in the same way I can take it. Maybe here I'm gonna do a get session factory, do control one, assign statement to a new local variable, session factory, copy this particular variable and use this one, session factory dot get, um, sorry, open session to open a new session, right? Correct, everything is good, but here, you know, maybe you guys are feeling, okay, Vilas, are you a dumb? Why are you doing these things? Because see, I have moved all the code from here to here. Anyhow, this is looking a little plain right now, little simple right now. It's pretty readable because we are, we are just, if someone is reading our code, he'll be reading, okay, get session factory will get me the session factory instance. Okay, perfect. He'll be hover over here and he'll be finding, okay, session factory instance on little be giving. But everything fine, but you know, you, we still need to write uh, this particular method over here. And in the other classes also right now, if you're going to your delete app, uh, oh, sorry, let's say create app. Okay, same thing we have to do. We have to remove this code. We have to write a new method over here, then call that particular method right over here inside the session factory. And we have to we have to do that every of the classes that we have written, like you know, inside our update app also, we have to do the same thing. We have to remove the code, remove this code. We have to go to any other app. Maybe I can copy paste the method that I have created, which is gonna get me the session factory instance right over here. And uh, once you are done, done with that, you have to call the get session factory here and this get session factory will get you the session factory instance and once you get that with the session factory only you will be opening the session right over here but here we are basically doing more i mean we are writing more garbage over here rather what i want i want to move all this method to a single to, to inside a particular global place. So for that, I can create a utility class guys, okay? Instead of writing this method over here and over 
here and over here, I can simply remove this particular thing from here and I can take it to a global uh, place. Maybe I'll create a new uh, uh, class here to right click new class. I'm going to put everything inside a package called com.seleniumexpress.utils, right? Because I'm going to be creating a utility class called hibernate utils, right? And inside this utils class, I'll be moving my session factory to here. Control P, Control Shift O, uh, Session Factory, do next, Hibernate CLC to finish. Okay, Control Shift O, there you go, right? I uh, And make, make this particular method public, right? Now inside my Hibernate Utils class, I have a get session factory method, which is gonna get me the session factory instance. So wherever I have written, uh, wherever I need a session factory, I will be using the Hibernate Utils class hibernate utils hibernate utils dot get session factory okay this is more uh, more readable isn't it so here we are getting the session factory so we are basically calling the get session factory method that i have created inside the hibernate utils click on this you'll be going inside that particular method this is the method you have written where you are basically building your session factory instance and returning it back okay same thing you can do in in every of your classes maybe here also i can just write hibernate utils dot get session factory okay same thing also you can do everywhere control c go to your create app here also i don't need all these things i need the session factory instance so call this method okay hibernate uh, utils dot get session factory and also go to the update app uh, here also it is modified in the read app also I'll be doing the same thing okay things are good so now we have improved our code a little bit now inside the hibernate utils we have a get session factory method which is going to get me a session factory instance perfect but now here we have a, another problem I'm going to tell you that particular problem right now so to show you that particular problem I'm going to be creating a test class create a class called test so basically I'm not teaching you Hibernate. I'm just trying to modify my code a little bit. So I'll be creating a test package and a test class. Inside the test class guys, I'll be showing you something. Create a main method, okay? Inside the main method, you just try to access that particular object, Hibernate utils .get session factory. This is gonna get you a session factory instance. I send the statement new local variable. Let me say session factory one. Let me collapse this one. Okay. And also I'll just try to uh, call the hibernate utils dot get session factory. This method that I have just created. Do control one. Okay. Can I copy this and paste it over here? Equal to. Okay. This is going to be session factory instance two. So I have created my uh, my session factory instance for a couple of time. Now let me print their instances to assist out. And I'm going to be saying session factory one plus I'll just keep a space over here and I'll be just concatenating this couple of object here session factory two. Now, if you're going to be run this application, you, you'll be seeing something fancy. And of course, I think you, most of you are basically thinking about that thing only. Now, if I'll be doing right click run as Java application, look at your code right now. Okay, look at this. So how many session factory instance we got over here? Here we are trying to get a session factory instance means we are internally in this method, we are building a session factory right here in the line number 16, isn't it? So, uh, okay, just give me a minute. Okay, now here, again, if you'll go back to your test of Java, in the session factory two, whenever you're printing it, look at this. Here you are getting a new session factory instance and here also you're getting a new session factory instance. This is basically your session factory impul object because I'm printing the session factory instance over here. Basically, I'm trying to log that particular instance. And of, over here, I'm getting couple of different session factory object here, isn't it? I'm getting two different session factory object. Now, so session factory object, so which is bad. I told you guys yesterday that we have to create one session factory object for our entire application because session factory is heavyweight. It contains a lot of different information and we do not want to make that object again and again, which is gonna eventually slow down your application, 
okay but here someone able to create couple of session factory instances which is not singleton simon you are talking about that only so should i make this particular class singleton well internally it is not it is immutable the session factory is immutable but right now as a developer we need to make sure let's say if someone in our project or if someone in our team wants to create a session factory instance he will be using this particular method that we have created inside the hibernate utils we'll be telling everyone we'll be writing an email that hey everyone who wants to create a session factory object from today i have created a utility class call this method and your object will be created because internally inside this method i'm creating my session factory object so once you get your session factory object do whatever you like to do okay so but the problem here is that someone can call this but if someone will be keep calling this particular method in your application it will be keep giving new new session factory instance and of course your your application will be heavyweight because this is a new session factory object you can see it's a new session factory object because session factory guys is a interface right session factory is a interface what is the implementation class do a control t that is the implementation implementation class here called session factory impl this is a new implementation class okay so that's the object you are seeing over here so internally whenever we are basically creating our session factory by using this method whenever you are using build method it is basically creating you a session factory impl object and assigning that object to the session factory okay so session factory is the interface session factory impl is the implementation class and right now we are getting two different implementation of our session factory and that is pretty bad and in that way if someone will be keep calling the get session factory object then your application will be surely heavyweight because we are creating a very heavyweight object again and again so here we have to do something so that this session factory object when someone will be called someone will be calling this particular method that method should return only one object every time we do not need to create any new object of session factory in uh, of session factory if that object is already created okay every time someone will be calling this method you will make sure that you will be returning him only one and one session factory instance because you do not want someone to call this method and every time he will be calling you will be creating a new session factory and giving him that that is bad and for that the design pattern i'll be following of course i'll be asking you later i don't want to confuse you guys by pronouncing this heavy words design patterns right now it's pretty simple i'll be creating a session factory instance right over here private session factory session factory so i'll be creating a new session factory initially i'll be assigning this to null okay this is a instance variable now i will make sure that i will be only be initializing this variable um one time in my application so whenever someone will be calling this method first of all i'll be checking if session factory can i access that variable of course not i'll not be acce accessing this particular variable right over here because this is a non non static variable is a instance variable make it a static variable okay so that i can do right now session factory i'm able to access that right now session factory is equal to equal to null if the session factory is equal to equal to null then only you execute this much code okay and i'll just wrap it up right over here okay if this object is null whenever this object is null then only you just execute this particular code and create a new session factory object and assign that to this variable copy this remove everything from here do a equal to and paste it okay now we are only be instantiating the session factory which is this object only when the session factory is null okay now if it is not null then we'll be directly returning the session factory instance okay so this is basically a design pattern we are using which is basically your single turn design pattern let's see whether it is working or not now yeah question okay let me complete it then i'll take yeah okay okay private constructor you are saying that do i need to have a private constructor yes 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 we can have but right now i'm making it simple yes, yes. i'm making it simple we can have many other things inside the hibernate utils we are just making sure that if someone is calling this method he should get one single one session factory instance every time so let's go to our test class 
and let's try to run this particular thing one more time and previously as you can see guys we used to have two different object right over here you can see 7d7 cs8 and this is 306 this hash codes are different right now let's run this particular application and let's see what's going to happen do right click run as java application okay this one 40e3762 40e3762 so same object only we are getting over here right so can i just do um if just want to check if uh, session factory one is equal to equal to session factory two then return uh, return listen then sys out okay two of two of the session factory uh, objects are same okay let's see that whether this line is getting printed this if clause will be only be executed if both these instances are referring to the same object in the memory of course uh, you know we are creating only one and one instance right over here and um, whenever that instance will be created every time uh, though in this particular guy is null then only will be creating the session factory otherwise we'll be just returning the same object and if we are returning the same object then of course we'll have this particular if clause will be true let's see that whether that is happening run as java application let's see that whether that line is getting printed and there you go two of the session factory objects are same right now we have implemented the singleton design pattern right over there right over there maybe i'm going to tell you one thing uh get session factory here we are making the first call put a breakpoint here go to that particular class okay now inside this method also put a breakpoint here let's see that uh, this particular if block when it is getting executed and when it is getting skipped i think everyone uh, you know are on the same pace let me try to execute this one do a right click debug as java application let my program flow stop at line number 11 it did stop because i have a breakpoint here let me go into this method so i'll be using step into because i will be going into this particular method called get session factory do that okay now you see that uh, the session factory instance is right now null right now i'm checking if the session factory is null of course this will be true to a step over if it will be true it will be going inside the if clause as you can see it is went inside the if clause because the session factory is null so of course this is this if condition matched now here we are creating the session factory instance configuration we are creating is going to take a while because of course you know that how many 54 kind of objects is setting uh because it is heavyweight also we are loading our hibernate.cfg.configuration file right now whenever we'll be executing the line number 17 that's why it's taking a time and now we'll be adding our song class now we are building the session factory now you see the session factory is right now null whenever i'll be executing this line by doing a step over i will be creating a session factory instance can i see that okay now you can see hibernate connection pool size 20 there is a hibernate connection pool also created with a size 20 i you, you know right you know that right because there i have cre i have defined the connection pool inside my configuration file that's why you are having this log okay now it is returning my session factory now hover on that we have a session factory instance whatever 35080495 that object will be returning so let me do a step over it will be going back to my line number 11 in the test app so do a step over now i got back that particular object right over here 35080495 now whenever i will be again calling this particular method the same method let's go into that now this time the session factory object is already initialized it is not null right now if it is not null then of course this condition will be failed and i'll be directly returning the session factory and the same session factory instance will be returned 35080495 do a step over and do a step over you can see both of the instances over here are same okay now if we'll do step over it will be going inside the if block printing this particular line to the console right over here again we'll be printing this couple of objects reference to the console itself now we are making our session factory singleton now we know that any developer calling this method well, in that case we will be having one and only one object right there in our system is it making sense guys yes or no guys is yes. it okay yes abhilash and yes abhilash mm -hmm. 
एंड माय क्वेश्चन इज सपोज आई एम अ बैड डेवलपर देन आई कैन क्रिएट मल्टीपल मल्टीपल सेशन फैक्टरी इन माय एप्लीकेशन या सो आई डोंट टेक केयर ऑफ मेकिंग द क्लास सिंगल टर्न हम्म देन ऑफ कोर्स यू विल हैव परफॉर्मेंस इशू आई कैन क्रिएट बाय मिस्टेक यू कैन क्रिएट दैट्स व्हाई बाय मिस्टेक यू विल बी क्रिएटिंग दैट्स व्हाई समबडी विल बी रिव्यूइंग योर कोड by mistake you will be creating that's why somebody will be reviewing your code <laughs> so will you be able to create a code and will be developers control yeah it is it is going to be your developer control but of course you know whenever you will be joining a project you will be seeing their existing code right now okay i have given you a task to create some utility methods or to create some you know to do some get operation maybe you will be going to some existing app the way i approach problem so make i go to a existing app okay this read app is already there how they are creating the session factory instance well they are creating the session factory instance just like this uh, i don't have to i don't have to do like this otherwise you know i will not be using their method i'll be using like configure uh, new configuration the way you know i can quickly show you another approach new configuration dot configure dot add annotated class then give your annotated class like song dot class then you know just do a build session factory and just do that okay here i have used another pattern to create the session factory i have used the same thing but i have used a chain method but here i'm breaking the pattern that these people are using let's say i'm a new developer i'm going to their company and i'm creating the session factory object manually by doing this okay then of course the people who will be reviewing my code whenever i'll be doing a peer review or when somebody um, what do we call that if someone my lead or my uh, you know architect will be reviewing my code he'll be saying okay did you refer your previous code or you just came and started writing your own concept you cannot say that okay i know how even it i'll be doing like this no look at their app how they have created okay i'll go to the delete app okay this is how they are creating the session factory instance i can simply copy and go over there and paste it over here to get my session factory instance isn't it so if i am a bad developer somebody will be there to guide me <laughs> you need to be a good developer first yeah <laughs> yes you need to be a good developer first every project architecture is ready so we need to more exactly exactly logic building part back so exactly so the skeleton will yeah so most of the time the skeleton will be set for you guys you guys will go and see and acquaint it, acquaint yourself in that particular uh, you know environment and you will be keep doing the things okay uh cool good uh okay now one more thing guys do you think do you think this is good coding this is how you have to create your session factory now you must be saying okay we'll have stop this right now now tell me what is that good code well this approach is legacy guys the way you are creating the session factory in the line number 21 there is also standard approach is available and this is kind of semi deprecated okay i'll be telling you some better way to create session factory but i'm keeping it to the next class maybe um i i won't be giving you so much burden in one day okay i have done something I have not done so much thing over here maybe you guys can follow the same process and to maybe in the next session I'll be telling you about something called service registry what do why do we need service registry what is metadata what is the latest way what is the hibernate five way to build a session factory but as i have told you this class will be ready for you you will not be building this code again and again so even if you are not understanding this i don't care about this what i care about you should understand today about the delete method about the save method about the about the get method about the load method if you are okay with that i am okay because this utility class right now i can give you you can do copy paste because i know this class you don't you don't you will not get chance to create session factory object many times in your application because session factory will be already been set up for you in your application or any project you are going with okay but yeah still we'll be learning as we are starting this course we'll be learning it in depth and i'll be giving you some ways to configure your session factory okay later cool so okay before we wrap up guys before i take any questions and before i wrap up let me create that interest for you guys so that you you will have some motivations to join the next class guys if you going to go to your update app okay so here you have written your update code right and you are basically loading your song okay from the database then you are setting some value to your song and then you are using this update method to update a song right So what about let's say I'll go to my database okay and if I'll do run this application 
let's say I want to update this believer to all capital or I, I want to update this song name believer to B capital. Okay, only uh, sorry B E capital. Maybe I can copy this and I, I just want to make this R, uh, th this uh, let me can, can, can I copy this copy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did I have a typo there? Okay. Sorry. Okay. So can I copy this? Okay. Now, now I had a typo, right? I want to fix it. I want to fix this typo over here. Okay. If I want to do that, then how I'll be doing? I'll be going over here. I'll be loading the believer class object. Maybe that is in number two. Okay. Number two song ID. I'll be going over here, loading that one. I will be uh, changing the song name here. Whatever I had a typo previously, I'm sent, I'm just setting the name over here. Then I'm just giving the song object to the update method so that a update query will be called and it will be basically doing the things for me. But now what I'll be doing, I'll move this. I'll just comment out this update method. I'll just delete it. Okay. I won't be doing anything. Only this set stuff. I'll just cut it and put it inside the transaction. Now you'll do so, you'll see some magic. Is there anywhere I'm calling the session dot update? No, right? I'm not calling the session dot update. Do a right click, run as Java application and magic. Okay, you got an update method here. You, you got an update call here. So why are you getting an update call? Where you are calling the update? You have not, you, you just create, you just load the data. You set the value, but you did not give this object to the update method of the session then how it is making an update right now. See, it, it did make a select query. Whenever you did a get, it's make a select query. This query has been used to load the data right over here. Once loaded, you change the data over here, right over here. The moment you did the change, it is making an update query automatically, even though we are not calling the update method. And if you're gonna go to your database, to your run, boom, your data has been changed. Then how this thing happened? And for that, you need to understand something called session. Now you can, you, you need to understand that in depth. You need to understand about persistence context. You need to understand about the states that we have internally. And that's where we'll be resume in the next class. Okay. And also one more thing, guys, whenever you are calling the session factory, okay, let's say this is the main line in the line number 15. You are calling the session factory in, uh, session factory method over here, which is giving you the session factory object, right? Using that session factory object only, you are opening a session and you are doing some blah, blah, blah here. Now inside the session factory, what you are doing inside the get session factory in, uh, method, you are basically, uh, you know, loading your configuration file. And you know that by default, it is going to look for this particular file that you have written here. Okay, what about inside this file, there are some problem. Let's say somebody has given the wrong password here. Password is wrong. Okay, now what will happen? Now what will happen? Do you think your application will run smoothly and will be terminated smoothly? Now if you'll go to your update app one more time, uh, let's say here only I was working, right? Now if I'm gonna be run this code, let's say believer one, two, three, uh, so I'm planning to change my believer of believer uh, record that I have in my database to believer one, two, three. Do you think this, this code will work right now? First of all, your code will be failed here only because whenever you'll be trying to create a session factory inside this method, whenever you will be creating the configuration object and whenever you will be trying to build the session factory, this session factory will not be built because you know, inside the session factory internally, it will be doing apply setting and it will be applying the setting. Uh, using the properties and these are the properties that will be loaded from your configuration file and using those property only you will be building your standard service registry builder which is basically a helper and you can see standard service registry builder is a helper which will be internally helping us to do it to create a session factory instance but right now the session factory instance internally cannot be created because inside your get session factory method you have to set off the correct configuration uh, right over here. So using this configuration, whenever you are building the session factory, using this session factory method internally will look for those properties inside that properties file. But right now you are making some mistakes here. You are giving the wrong password. So how come the session factory instance will be created? Can I save ev everything? Go to my update application. I have opened everything. Don't get confused guys. Let me go to the update app. Let me run this. You'll be seeing in the line number 15, whenever the call will go to here, this line only will be fail. Okay. You'll not be able to build the session factory. Do a right click. Run is Java application. 
okay and you will be seeing something right now okay now you have some exception some ugly looking exception look at that cannot get a connection as the driver manager is not properly initialized we are not able to create the driver manager we are not able to create the data source internally and that's because uh, we have a hibernate exception uh, okay uh, cannot be said because hibernate or dialect okay i'll be showing you a exact problem somewhere maybe uh, okay update up java line number 15 okay can i show you the exact exception uh okay just give me a sec guys give me a sec i'll be showing you the exact line which is throwing you exceptions hmm update up hibernate exception once one minute hibernate util start java line number 21 what i have there look at that line number 21 this line only complaining because we are not able to build the session factory because internally the way they have written the code while they will be building the session factory instance they will be applying the settings using your properties that you are configuring and those properties are right now invalid okay and uh, to, to do that make sure that whenever you are creating the session factory instance you also need to handle the exception okay and the way you can do that you can wrap this if with a try block okay try catch you can move this piece of code okay this piece of code to the try block okay and any exception is happening catch it right over here do e dot print stack trace and also you can just do this out you know session factory factory object did not create or not created okay not created because of some issue okay hope it is making sense right now your cache block will be uh, called and you know things will be okay right now you can see that your exception will be handled now if you go to your test or job sorry update app do a right click run as job application and you will be seeing right now see uh, see session factory object is not created because uh, because of some issue okay now again you are getting another exception called null pointer exception in the update app dot uh, uh, update uh, in, in this update app java line number 17 okay inside the line number 17 because as we are having some issue in the uh, in the session factory get session factory whenever we'll have some issue the cache block will be called then the session factory object will be returned but this time as this code has not been uh, you know initialized that means this particular line will not be initialized that means the session factory will be null and this will be returning me null and in that case I have to make sure whenever I'm writing my update app this session factory may be null so I have to check before I do anything if okay and I can put everything right over here with a call brace and I can do if session factory not equal to null then only do all this stuff okay then only you, you just run this code okay otherwise uh, just log something let's say this out maybe uh, if it is not null uh, okay if it is otherwise you can log something or do whatever right now you'll be saying run this okay the last exception will is gone right now that null pointer is gone because you are you are not using the session factory instance because previously directly you are accessing session factory dot open session if this is null this will give you null pointer okay making sense guys we're on the same pace yeah Bilash. okay too much too much for today okay i don't want to tell all these things but yeah um, okay just you know uh, okay it's in one and a half hour already okay that's it guys thank you very much for joining in the next class we'll be learning so many interesting thing if these things okay anyone is beginner and hearing this conversation uh, okay, maybe you are hearing it in my paid series or you are hearing in my demos in YouTube or in my website. If you are pretty freshers, I still recommend you to check out everything and understand bit by bit. But still, you can ignore this particular thing and you can configure your session factory right over here the way you used to do previously. You have to create configuration object the manually the way we have done yesterday. Same way you can proceed. Uh, and you can just complete the crowd part but i really recommend you to learn everything okay because you know the reason you are learning this because you want to work and of course whenever you'll be working 
uh, what about you will be getting a null pointer exception you are not able to fix it then your lead is going to scold you for sure okay and if i i would be your lead then you know of course i'll not be scolding you so <laughs> so basically make sure that um, not everyone is kind they will be scolding you and um, make sure that you are okay with all these things okay the exception handling part and everything try and understand bit by bit why this is happening why i have to do that why i'm writing this okay ask that why question and explore the things okay cool that's it okay i don't want to i don't want to uh, talk more do you have any questions relevant to the topic otherwise i can drop guys are you guys understanding uh, just tell me yes or no you guys are understanding everything right or i'm making you bored It's fine, Abhilash. Okay. Are you sure? Kushbu, everything making sense? Yes, Abhilash. Yes. Okay. Uh, Lavanya, Nagasri, can you please ping me on the chat if everything okay so far? Prabin, please do the practice and let me know. Please do the practice of all these things. Okay. Oh, okay. No excuses, yeah. Prabin. Talk to me one to one. Okay. If there is any issue, I'll be helping with okay. the code. Start coding. Start the process. Okay. And then if there is anything happening, just let me know. Um, okay. okay. Srija, everything okay so far, right? Yes, Abhilash. Yeah. Okay. Not, well, not boring so far, right? Or it's boring. Tell me on my face. No, Abhilash. Tell me that. No, Tell me, Srija. I won't be mind. I, I won't mind that. <laughs> cool. That's it then, guys. Thank you very much for joining. And uh, we'll, I'll see you guys on Tuesday, most probably. Uh, Tuesday in your morning session regular 7 30 today I had um, I do not have my spring boot and microservices batch that's why I just you know rescheduled your call and yeah that's it okay let me stop sharing Good evening, Abhilash. Hey, good evening. Abhilash, you completed the JWT assignment or REST one? Mm -hmm. REST, are you crazy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> are you talking about REST is something I'm going to be celebrating in your, in your batch? <laughs> oh, I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> he, okay, has, got it. he has completed that particular assignment so maybe you guys can schedule a call with him so you saw a demo also no i i did not have any time to see that but you guys can have okay. a call maybe sometime later okay, okay okay all right so let me also start the recording okay let me wait for a couple more minutes hey praveen hey somik Hi Rahul, hi Nagasri, hi Srija. Hi Abhilash. Hello. Hey ma'am. Ma <laughs> oh, okay. So, c congratulations, Omic. <laughs> I, I ruined your weekend. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this is the priority actually. Uh, no, no. Actually, you know, I'm stop stopping a Bengali for Durga Puja, right? God will not forgive me. <laughs> okay. So. Hey, Mehmet. Hello. Hello. Okay, so let's wait a couple more minutes. Let's everyone join the call. Hmm. Hi, Abhilash. Hello. Uh, Abhilash, uh, I asked you one question about the uh, accepting right? Mm hmm. That is how to handle. We are showing all exceptions at the time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, in the morning, huh? Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll have a call. Be uh, sure, just like last weekend. Okay, maybe if I'll be free yeah. tomorrow, uh, I'll be pinging. So you'll be you will be free, be sure, tomorrow. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, I'll I'll be pinging and we'll schedule some time. Yeah. Hey, hey. hello. Santan Sri. Hi, Santan. Well, if you really call for exception handling, please also inform me. Okay, okay. I'll, anyhow, I'm <laughs> going to be taking a, a specific call for that. Okay. Uh, so, yeah.